What if I told you all of Tangled was just a dream? Hey brother! Y'all, not gonna lie, I've been on a real Tangled kick here over the past few weeks. We just went on a Disney cruise, the Disney Wish, where Rapunzel is painting the logo on the back of the boat. We even got to meet her on board. Where as you can see, the psych level for my kids was an astonishing 11 out of 10. As you may know, I personally collect Pluto pins and was on the hunt when I was on the ship, but the whole family got like pin fever and my son Luke decided that he was on the hunt for Tangled pins. We even just got a Rapunzel doll in the mail yesterday. And then of course my kids have just been loving watching the movie and the show and personally I've been loving it too because it is such a good movie and so not Blaze and the Monster Machines. Whew, I'm getting tired of that one. I mean, they could just be a little bit nicer to Crusher, that's all I'm saying. Crusher! Anyway, as we've been watching Tangled, I have noticed a certain set of Easter eggs early in the movie that seem to throw into question the reality of the rest of the entire movie. Like, did any of it actually happen at all, or was it just a... What's the word? Dream? Dream. Dream! Dream! Today, we reveal how Tangled is just a dream. Okay, so right out of the gate, I'll just address that, yes, I know there is a show about Tangled, which is actually very good, and whose existence would disprove that the movie is a dream. So, for the sake of your enjoyment of this video, this is a movie-only theory. Cool? <laughs> But if you did already leave a comment about the show, you are now bound by internet law to click the like button. I mean, I don't, I don't make up the rules. I just, I just dream them up and then enforce them. Okay, moving on. Tangled is a dream, but not all of it. Some parts do still happen, namely the very first things you see happening. Let me set the stage. Yes, Mother Gothel is real and so is the Magic Golden Flower. The Queen does still become pregnant and get sick and the palace guards seek and find the Golden Flower which successfully heals her and Rapunzel is born. Yay! P.S. Just quick aside here, I have no idea why but I've always found the root system on the Magical Golden Flower like oddly satisfying. Like this is one super healthy magical plant. Moving on. First question. Is her hair magical? Well, yes, I think so but possibly not in the exact same way but Possibly also in the same way, but with other powers too? Either way, it's kind of hard to say for sure because that's about as far as the real parts of the movie go. The moment you see this, Rapunzel sleeping, the dream has started. In fact, even her sleeping is in the dream, and yes, it is her dream. She, little baby Rapunzel, is the one dreaming and concocting the rest of the story in her head, which is all informed by her limited surroundings. Which, to be fair, as far as we see, is very little, but it is more than enough to go on, and amazingly, as little as she has already seen in life, a lot of it informs the contents of everything else that is about to happen. First of all, we know that a massive plot point for the overall story is that Rapunzel sees the lanterns being released into the night sky from Mother Gothel's tower deep in the woods. Now, this might seem like a fairly fantastical thing for such a little mind to cook up, but we actually do see that as a young baby, Rapunzel has already witnessed the release of one of these exact lanterns, specifically in her honor. Her honor because she is, of course, actually a princess, which is a vital detail because some Something else that has already happened in her fairly short life so far is the placing of the far oversized crown on her tiny little baby head. Once again, this particular object is vital to the overarching story because the key event that puts the whole thing in motion is Flynn Rider stealing the crown from the palace. But more on Flynn in just a second. The next key object we see Tiny Rapunzel interact with is the mobile located directly over her bassinet. You know, the very last thing she would see before nodding off to sleep. Turns out this mobile is amazingly important because it features exactly five specific objects on it. A blue bird, a horse, a winged angel, a duck, and a chameleon. And let's start with the last one. The chameleon is incredibly interesting to me and part of what sent me down this path in the first place. Because I love Pascal. He is an amazing sidekick all throughout the movie and his allegiance to Rapunzel is incredible. However, the selection of a chameleon for this particular story is so out of place. I mean, Tangled is in the kingdom of Corona, which is supposed to be in Germany, and chameleons are not in any way native to this area of the world. But if a chameleon is one of the last few things Rapunzel was looking up at before falling asleep, then it totally makes sense. I mean, what are the odds that of the five objects on her mobile, which are all seemingly 
unrelated anyway. One is a chameleon and that she also ends up with the pet chameleon? Because keep in mind, Mother Gothel's tower is a completely different environment than the one at the castle. And like, sh th there's no there's no connective fiber here. The fact that there's a chameleon in both places is really weird. But it doesn't stop there because also on the mobile, we have the white horse, which is 100% a reference to Maximus the horse, the most OP crime fighter in the history of all of Disney cinema. Yeah, take that Bay Max. Y you must be Maximus. I am not fast. Moving on, we also have the little bluebird from the mobile, which is slightly less important to the overall story, but like everything else on the mobile, does show up at a very critical moment for Rapunzel, who was taking her first ever steps anywhere other than inside of the tower when a little bluebird appears, and then even more appeared as she properly enters the real world for the first time. The bluebirds represent her freedom, her escape. Also, she's doing a puzzle of one right here in the tower, so it keeps popping up. And guys, now we need to take a brief pause right there to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Shopify. This is actually how we power Carly Miller's Mercantile. Have you ever heard someone say, wow, that's a million dollar idea? Because when I was a kid, I always imagined this to be like in a category similar to inventing the light bulb or the internet or Grogu from Star Wars. Hey buddy. But what I've come to learn is that loads of people have million dollar ideas every day, just brilliant solutions to everyday problems. But where to start, where to sell? Shopify could very easily be your answer. So get your idea out of your head and available to customers online quickly and easily with Shopify. They're ready for you, whether you're looking to make your first ever sale or have a warehouse of product waiting to go out the door. Even here at Super Carlin Brothers, we used Shopify from day one when we launched the coffee company. And what I loved the most was just that we didn't need to know how to code or web design or any of that. We could just bring a product we were proud of and let Shopify take it from there. But the real deal is that you can sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash scb, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash scb now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. One more time, that is shopify.com slash scb. Link is in the description down below. Now back to the dream. Then there's the last two items, the duck and the winged angel. And these actually go together perfectly. The duck is clearly a reference to the snuggly duckling, you know, the very non-dangerous sounding place full of ruffians. And look, I'm all for a good juxtaposition of name versus environment. I mean, snuggly duckling is a hilarious and great name for a bar of thugs, but it is also a very unlikely name, especially when at this point in the movie, we are just way past coincidence. Because at this point, the horse, the chameleon, the the bird and now the duck have all shown up. And so the reason the bar is called the snuggly duckling is because she was snuggling in bed, looking at a duck when she fell asleep. But speaking of being asleep, let's get back to the ruffians inside the bar, all of whom happen to have very sensitive, touchy-feely dreams hidden beneath their extremely fierce exteriors. And I just love the messaging here that anyone can have any dream at all, no matter what life has served them to this point. But interestingly, all of their dreams are things Rapunzel has already dreamed up for herself. In her opening song, Rapunzel lists off her daily routine and a variety of skills she's developed over the years, all of which line up nicely with the ruffian's dreams, as if the dream version of herself can already do all of these things. And isn't that just the way like a very little kid would think, like whatever you dream about, that's what everyone else's dreams are too? One of them wants to be a florist? Boom, Rapunzel does flowers. One of them wants to play music? Boom, Rapunzel can play guitar. Interior design? That's basically all she does does. Attila's cupcakes are sublime, so are Rapunzel's pies and cookies. The paper mache she makes looks like the mime. Oh, do these guys knit and sew? Well, <laughs> so does Rapunzel. Even puppet shows are cumbered. I mean, what do you think ventriloquism is? Heck, they even have darts in common. There is the one guy who wants to fall in love, and obviously she isn't experiencing any of that in the tower, but she is right in the middle of her own love story. Plus, the song is literally called I've got a dream, but I think it's more like you're in a dream, guys. Maybe it's like, I've got to dream. I've got to dream. That's what Rapunzel's little baby mind is thinking. I've got to dream. Now let's zero in on a specific ruffian. Shorty. This little guy rounds off our mobile as the winged angel, and this one is straight up 
bonkers. When we see him show up in this very unusual garb, he's actually being lifted to the rafters, tied up by a rope, and sent swinging in a circular fashion around the ceiling of the pub, exactly like the winged angel on the mobile would have rotated above Tiny Rapunzel's head in her bassinet. Like, are you kidding me? There's just no reason for this ruffian in this snuggly duck themed bar to be dressed this way. Like, just even at all. Speaking of being at the pub, let's just go ahead and back ourselves up one hot second and take a look at the guide who brings Rapunzel there in the first place. Flynn Rider. Are you hungry? I know a great place for lunch. Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about one Flanagan Rider. Swashbuckling rogue, richest man alive, not bad with the ladies either. Flynn himself is kind of fascinating because, as we all know, his actual name is Eugene Fitzherbert. He's just adopted the persona of Flynn Rider based on the storybook character that he used to read about to the younger kids at the orphanage. But from a dreamer's perspective, this is also super interesting because it means that there is some potential that they're actually exists in the not dream world a book about a character named Flynn Rider that could have been read to a young Rapunzel. You see what I mean? Like imagine for a second the king and queen are readying little Rapunzel for the night and read her a story about this totally great Flynn Rider guy. Then Rapunzel goes to sleep and imagines this exact character as her very own love interest. Because let's face it there's no way you don't describe Flynn as being I don't know a tiny bit dreamy. Here comes the smolder. Actually, quick backstory. When designing the character of Flynn, they held what they called the hot man meeting with a team of 30 staffers bringing in photos of men they found attractive and merging the characteristics together until the end result was Flynn. That is not a joke, that actually happened. And I think they nailed it. You broke my smolder. Point is, turns out Flynn's not just Rapunzel's dream. He's like at least, 30 other people's dream. But living this fantastical life and story, complete with all this imagery from her very early life, the lanterns, the crown, the mobile images, the storybook love interest, it still doesn't stop there. When Flynn and Rapunzel finally make it into the kingdom, they join in on the massive celebration that's going on, and somewhere in the mix, Flynn buys Rapunzel a small flag with the crest of Corona emblazoned upon it, the sun. Later, if we fast forward some, Rapunzel has been recaptured by Mother Gothel and she pulls out this flag and looks up to her ceiling to realize that this symbol is everywhere. Somewhere deep in her subconscious, she must have been trying to tell herself something by accidentally including this design into all of her various paintings. And as ever, it comes back to the mobile. The other symbols all play their part prominently in her dream, but nothing wove itself into the fabric of the tale more than what she would have seen at its dead center. This symbol. It's her wake up call, if you will, to what's really going on. It's as if seeing the sun finally wakes her up, which, you know, actually is typically how the sun works. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yes, absolutely <laughs> smash to the Lion King. <laughs> and from here, we see what you may see in any great dream. You, the hero, rises up against the dastardly villain to save the day so you can live happily ever after. Or actually, if you have dreams more like me, you're probably just like running in slow motion and you feel like you can't hit the ground and you have to go faster because you're running late. Just land. But actually, speaking of the dastardly villain, you might be wondering how Rapunzel's dream would be able to correctly cast the real Mother Gothel as the villain when she never would have met her because Gothel kidnapping Rapunzel would be part of the dream itself, right? Well, remember earlier I said her hair could still be magic and possibly with extra powers, and what I meant is that I think the flower and the magic inside of it, slash now inside Rapunzel, remembers Mother Gothel as its own captor for centuries. Which is why even though baby Rapunzel has never met Mother Gothel, she still shows up in the dream as the bad guy to kidnap the magic, which would then also explain why the song in the dream is the the same one as the one Mother Gothel sings to the flower. So no, the actual Mother Gothel doesn't kidnap Rapunzel in real life. Instead, she probably just withered away pretty quickly, I'm thinking, without access to the flower for so long. So 
Hey. Plus, if the flower is remembering Mother Gothel, then it may also be projecting its own true power into the dream as Rapunzel's magic hair, meaning her hair is likely magic in the usual way we know it to be. But at this point, you might be thinking, oh no, wait, does that mean none of it happened? There was no adventure, no frying pans, no Pascal, no Eugene Fitzherbert? Like, how do you wake up from that? Do they still get married? Well, somehow she even managed to cover that ground too. What if it's not everything I dreamed it would be? It will be. And what if it is? What do I do then? Well, that's the good part, I guess. You get to go find a new dream. You wake up and follow the sage wisdom of the one and only Hook Hand. Go live your dream. Go live your dream. <laughs> But there you go, guys. Tangled is all a dream. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment and all of the all of the algorithm things. If you want to see how Mother Gothel is actually also Meg from Hercules, I, I know it sounds crazy, but it's absolutely true. If you you know believe our theory, and if you don't, you should just, you should go watch it and then decide whether you believe it because you will. See you in another life.